And welcome back, everyone. Ellington here, and we are back on Total War Attila. And this is the 1212 AD mod. And we have got ourselves a three versus three in house battle. That means that everybody in this battle is in the Dragon Core Discord, and they were all in their separate team chat playing in this game. So. Let's get to go ahead and get into some of the players and the factions. Since we're already looking at them, we'll go and look at the attackers here. So first of all, we have the Electorate of Trier, which is being commanded by Billy Blazes. We've also got, uh, this is Wales, the Kingdom of Wales being commanded by Alton. And then somewhere around here, we have got the Marinids being commanded by Mexi. For the defenders, we have got, let's see, I believe this is the Khwarazmian um, Sultanate Empire? I can't remember what they're listed as, but this be, they're being commanded by Posguin. We've got, I hate that they don't put the banners above, like the faction banners. I believe these are the Mamluks being commanded by Kirito. And then finally, the person who sent in this battle, Titty Rond, commanding the Kingdom of France. And right now, looks like inside the settlement, all we have are some of the electorate units. We've got some sword infantry and some spears. Um, and then on the far left, we do have some of the Marinid units. <clears throat> you can see they've got a breach in the wall over here, and then a breach over here as well as they have taken down majority of the towers in these areas. Realistically, a lot of people may question, you know, is it... So the Bombards, the Great Bombard in this game, will take down one of the towers in one hit. And I think some people may think that that's overpowered. Oh, how can you have something so strong that, you know, just kills a whole, you know, tower in one hit, yada, yada, yada. But to be perfectly honest with you, I don't realistically think it actually has that big of an impact. It does take away some free kills from the defenders, but the only real reason that you destroy these is so that you don't accidentally capture them yourself. Because in Attila, if you capture the uh, tower, it collapses and you are likely to kill a bunch of your units or strand a bunch of your units on the wall because once the tower's collapsed, then that gateway cannot be used any, or that like stairway can't be used anymore. Realistically in this game, that is the main reason you get rid of the towers. Uh, obviously it helps getting rid of the kills a little bit, but it's not as big of an effect as the possible death of an entire unit of yours, you know what I mean? So that's the big thing. But they really have only taken two breaches so we've got, I believe they have, the way we have changed the rules a little bit, used to be that they we only allowed one bombard. But we kind of came to the realization that the time of attack, so the initial like getting through the walls, opening a breach, so on and so forth, takes forever in Attila because the Great Bombard is the only siege equipment that is actually good at taking down walls. All the other equipment, it takes, it, they just do so little damage against stone walls that they take forever and it just isn't worth it. So, if you think about it in like reference to Rome, think about it like the Great Bombard is the attacker's um, tortoises, right? You know, the tortoises are used in Rome to pull up and break down walls so you don't have to fight pur purely on top of the walls because it's a death sentence. Well, in Rome or in Attila, there is no, there is no tortoise. So the Great Bombard is the tortoise. It's the, the thing that we give the attackers to allow themselves into the like a better way through the walls, right? Um, so the way we did it is, um, in Attila, we have the attackers hold a little money, bit of money back because the money difference between Attila and, or between attackers and defenders on Attila is like 6,000 gold. It, it's ridiculous, it might be five actually, but still, it's a pretty ridiculous amount of money and it's way too big of a difference. 
So we have the attackers leave a little bit of money on the table to kind of balance that a little bit better. And the Great Bombard is about 12 or 1400 gold, I think. Might be 1700. Um, but we basically allow one of the players to use their money that they left on the table to buy a Great Bombard for free to allow them to help get through the walls quicker. And then the other way we decided to balance it is we only allow both of the Bombards to use half ammo. The whole goal of bringing two Bombard was to help get through the walls, not allow for more walls to be got through, if that makes sense. I, I, I hope I'm not confusing people. It's still a little confusing when I think about it. That's the one downside to Attila is that the unit rules we found we've had to make far more of them than, you know, like the unit rules in Rome 2 are super easy. One artillery, two pikes, four ranged. It's super easy, very simple. Ta-da. In Attila, it's like, you know, only two shock infantry, only two shock cavalry, only two pikes or pole arms, only blah, 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 blah. You know, and it just, it's a lot which sucks, but it's the way we found to make these games as balanced as we possibly can. Interestingly, we already have pikes in from the attackers. Very, very quick. You know, usually we don't see things come in this fast, uh, especially not pikes. I kind of like it, you know, one, it, it could force the attackers to use a bit more ammunition early on than they probably wanted to. Um, and the, also the, there's the other chance that the attackers, or the defenders, I think is what, the defenders use more ammo than they, they wanted to, excuse me. Um, and then there's also that, that they may be able to get them in without as much archer focus as they might. But it does look like they're getting focused pretty good here. Um, you know, obviously the defenders being smart here and backing off of that. There's no point in fighting that unit straight up. But yeah, you know, little early, you know, earlier than I would have expected. You can see the unit already kind of wavering. Sorry, I took a drink there. But we do our, we are getting some backups by from some sergeants from Wales. Down the center of the settlement, we've got the Mamluks and the French guarding against Wales, it looks like. Then, kind of on the center right here, we've got the Mamluks just kind of facing down the electorate of Trier. On the right-hand side, not a whole lot as of right now. We got some handguns up on the wall, uh, and it looks like they might start getting some shots in. As well as you can see, we've got an infantry unit kind of protecting that side. Right now, the attackers have one unit up here. They got some sword infantry, and they do have crossbows here shooting up at the, the rebods. It's a light melee infantry. Looks like just kind of like a little axe unit. Don't even have shields. Going up against a probably better unit. They definitely look more armored. Got some French chevaliers. I love the looks on this mod. They did an excellent job at the character um, draw, you know, making the characters in the in the game. Smart idea here. We got this the Marinids bringing their archers all the way off to the side here because then they can get some shots in on the flanks and backs of these Karazmian infantry. Got some medium spear infantry. Honestly, the, the defenders having to kind of broaden up this, this area here. I actually think that pike kind of bought them a little bit of space. A lot of firepower up here. Got the heavy ranged melee infantry. So it's a melee infantry that has bows. Um, it's another unit that we usually kind of limit a little bit of how much you can bring of them. I think this guy's kind of got peacock feather on his helmet. Only real men wear peacock feathers on their helmets. 
Come on, guys. Delami Infantry going up against Sergeants again. Whoops, sorry about that. I wish that the uh, projectile trails were a little less smoky. You know what I mean? <laughs> See what I mean? You, you can go into the game settings and you can turn projectile trails off, but it means then you literally can't see them at all. This is going to be a tough side to hold because of this here. And you could see they do, you know, you might wonder, well, are they threatened? You know, their archers are pretty out there. They actually have two units of heavy shock cavalry over here on the right uh, ready to come intercept because they probably don't know it yet, but there is a, the Khorasmian general is over here as well as some Mamluk cavalry. It's a two chevron one. Got the French general Jean d'Arc over here. Did he take his guns? So he didn't take them off, but he pulled them back. They've got 25 kills at the moment. We've got Je, Je Campagne. It's a medium bow. They're actually pretty like tanky for an archer unit. Dismounted French Chevaliers. And then some Arbalestias, which is a crossbow unit. Although the Arbalest, if I remember correctly, was a more advanced crossbow. I don't remember exactly how or what it, like it did more, but I believe it was a later version of the crossbow. The center here is still just kind of like chilling. I mean, they do have a little bit of combat going on. You know, we've got the let's see, the Mamluks taking on Sergeants of Wales. Sergeants with 89 kills. That's pretty good. And then 18 on the other one. So if you've never played the 1212 mod, something you're going to have to get used to is that your regular melee infantry do not expect to be pulling out you know, regularly 200, 300 kills on these guys, okay? It just is a very different game. They really don't do that on, on these kind of units. Um, realistically, the best units for getting lots of kills individually are going to be things like your cavalry, shock cav, and shock infantry are really your, like, big killers, your heavy hitters. Um, a lot of your other spears and, and regular melee infantry, they just don't pack a lot of punch. Got some heavy ranged melee infantry here that are actually going to get in combat here with still some ammo left on them. Same thing, two units here. You had the heavy shot cap general from the Marinids coming forward, but I, I think due to the, the, the meeting melee infantry, the meaty melee infantry being here, I think he kind of pulled off because he wouldn't have got a good charge. They are in good formation too. They're they're braced. But shot cav in this game is is just ridiculously good. So that shot cav now 50 kills, 52 kills. But you can see the Khorasmi in general coming in. And somebody's probably going to say in the comment about how I'm butchering the name there, and I really apologize, but I'm doing my best, okay? Here we go. We got shock infantry over on the right, the dismounted French Chevaliers. Look at them, 366 kills, two chevrons. They are just eating through everything. Here's the deal. If shock infantry is not dealt with accordingly, a.k.a. shot to death, pole arms, uh, handguns, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, enemy shock infantry. Shock infantry are going to eat their way through everything you have if you don't, if you don't focus them. Right? You can see some pole arms coming up. The electro elector halberdiers. But 396 kills now, and he's about to get his third chevron as well. It's coming up pretty quick here. 405. 
59 kills. You can see in counter to the counter of the shock infantry, they are focusing the pole arms. The pole arms are the biggest threat to the shock infantry, so they want to get rid of them. Until they do, you can see he is going to pull that shock infantry back. It's also winded, so probably not a bad idea to do. But in the meantime, they're just going to focus that thing down and try and get rid of it. Up on the walls here, we do have the Colvett. Yeah, they're handguns. It's a medium handgun from the French, and they've got a pretty juicy little little setup here. So there is a, a, a stairway up. Here's Cav. Hospitaller Knights coming in. They're going to charge straight into, well, not a very good charge. See, they got split up by some of their own men. So not the greatest charge there. And so the shock infantry might actually be able to get some kills here. They've got 56. They did take losses to that Hospitaller Knight. And then here's, um, this is that French cav that was over here at the beginning of the battle is now coming along the right hand side and there's some pretty good targets here. You can see they've got a sergeant here uh, taking on the Trier sword infantry, but there's a wide open gap straight into just archers. You also could go straight into the hospitaller knights. I don't know, Let's see, it's a 15th century. 15th century heavy. They're pretty similar. It looks like the French cabin may be just a little better than the Hospitaller Knights. Over on the left side, they've pushed, but they haven't pushed all the way down. You can see there is no side way onto the point, which is up here. You have to come all the way back around here um, or around the back here. Or you could see there's a way up here. Ooh, the French Knights maybe not going to get a charge. I don't know what happened there. They kind of they kind of just stopped, you know. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what happened. He's lost seven men on that unit now, though. Hospitaller Knights are at 51 out of 70. They've got 104 kills now. The only thing they've got guarding this side is just another, another dismounted French uh, Chevalier. Surprised that they're just holding up just with that one instead of maybe like a sergeant that could do like a shield wall maybe. Because these guys don't have shield wall. They can brace though. That's probably a smart call there in kind of backing off of that. His archer company here is out of ammo 142 kills with two chevrons that's pretty good for an archer over on the left we've got another mamluk unit we got 35 uh, 35 kills 107 on the whale on the welsh the welsh sergeants you can see they're still kind of holding this frontal area here they still have some Heavy range melee infantry. They're shooting over at the handguns. Handguns, 39 kills from the Marinids. It's got a solid little shot here, but so do they. They've got a pretty good angle as well. Still kind of quiet over on the right. Still got the handguns up here. They're at 49 kills. Um, nothing quite has gone up there to try and, you know, deal with them. They're not really a, a huge threat at the moment, though. This kind of worries me because... While they do have, once again, some of the dismounted French Chevaliers here, but realistically, they only have, like, ranged, ranged, ranged. You know, a lot of these units over here are really weak. They do have plenty of infantry back here, so maybe he's just not that interested in holding the front area at the moment. That could be very well true that it's just not maybe that worth it to him.
Sorry, I cleared my throat there. Look at these range. This is that heavy range melee. 156 kills now. 163 on the one behind it. They've, you know, really pushed some units far down, but really not tons of them either. They've got the Krasmian generals still here. There's some elephants. I didn't see them until now. Indian elephants here. As well as you've got that Mamluk infant, uh, Mamluk cavalry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Still have the Mamluk general as well. A lot of fire happening here. Probably due to these mortar shots. In the center, we've got um, this is that heavy shock infantry coming in. Dismounted Electro Knights. They've got 38 kills. They're really just kind of fighting this medium bow infantry. I'm a little surprised that... Where did the shock infantry he had go? Oh, it's right there. It's kind of surprised he didn't charge into that. The shock infantry pulling out, and they're going to swap out. Oh, not a good swap. Once again, the Hospitaller Knights just getting crammed up with the... Dismounted Elector Knights there. I'm a little surprised that he didn't take his Dismounted French Chevaliers and throw them in after that unit had gotten uh, engaged here with the archers. You know, he would have gotten probably a, a really good charge into a, a unit standing still. Here comes the Hospitaller Knights. Getting shot by some uh, ranged melee infantry. They're going straight into the guard, guard at Cassiers. They kind of bust, busted right through that unit and got a little bit into the dismounted shock infantry. They're kind of back in these lines now, 178 kills. Now the shock infantry turning the corner into the ranged melee infantry. But the Hospitaller Knights are don't look like they're gonna make it. They're 13 out of 70 and wavering and then you also have the French cavalry coming to deal with them as well. That mortar is kind of just annoying as hell. 146 kills, and he's got a decent chunk of ammo left. Hospitaller Knights do get a charge off. Gotta love the bright, or not bright, but the deep blood maroon of the Hospitallers. Although I could, I always could have swore that the Hospitallers used a black tabard with a white cross. I could be wrong, but and maybe maybe that varied. Maybe they sometimes did one, sometimes did the other. But I could have swore it was black and white. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like I see images on both. I'm looking it up right now. There's some red and some black, so I guess it looks like they could be both. Dismounted Elector Knights, 120 kills. They've got a Chevron, but they're about to break. The French Cav turned the corner and went straight into some Trier Sword Infantry. Now, Trier Sword Infantry, only 85 out of 160, and they've only got three kills. Then we've got the, I think, I think this is the one of the Quaresmian, Quaresmian cav units that was doing some charging here, but he's pulling back. Um, honestly, they're kind of losing grips on all of this area, except for over here, they're still kind of holding relatively well. Got some of the Marinid cavalry trying to, I think they were pursuing this one. 209 with two chevrons on that cav unit. And over here, they just, it looks like they're just not super interested in coming over here. Maybe they're worried about the Defender Cav. Got the sergeants here for, uh, this is French, the French sergeants. They're up here all the way over on the other side of the battlefield to where he's typically been fighting. 
basically seem to be just holding this wall. 92 kills over on the right. Um, these are those handguns. And oh no, they're going to get such a good shot on this Elector's Guard, which is a cav unit. At this angle, he's probably not going to get a whole lot more shots off on him. He might get a couple angled into him, but probably not a lot. Just because, once again, that angle's a little bit hard. Now he might get another volley. Got the dismounted French Chevaliers here. Now, this is a fresher... Well, I say fresh. They're pretty beat up. But this is not the same unit from earlier. Um, and unfortunately, just really getting obliterated there. I think he got, well, he didn't really get a whole lot more. But here comes the shot cav from France. I'm not even going to try and say that, sorry. Uh, charging on the Elector Guard. I think the Elector Guard, they're pretty evenly matched. 44 to 42. Looks like the French cav might be just a hair bit better, though. Oh, and here's the French general. Jean d'Arc is in the play now, in play. He's going to come around with her and probably blast right through this sword infantry unit. Now, back towards the center of the combat, you know, this is the, the main point over here. The bounce power is very heavily in the attacker's favor. And they have a really strong push going here. They need infantry in the fight ASAP. And it looks like I think that we're going to see France coming, kind of coming back. I think France has a lot of the leftover infantry here. They do still have a lot of cavalry. They still have elephants. If I was him, yeah, he's already pulling the sergeants back. Infantry here. Now, this worries me. You got a unit of Dismounter Hospitaller Knights and really nothing here to stop them. You know, they've got some range infantry almost out of ammo. This trebuchet is honestly really got a ton of ammo left. You know, you might even consider bringing your treb back a little bit and being able to use it a little better into this center area. They've got handguns with 99 kills. La oh, big cav. Look at this. We've got Jean d'Arc is fighting the Welsh general and the, one of the Marinid cav. You've got the handguns trying to help out. 106 kills. And I think that the Jean d'Arc might go down here, but they might also get the Welsh general as well. And here we go, Lecter Guard. This is that um, cav unit from before. He's got 135 kills. Look at the, is that, the, yeah, the Quasmi, I gosh, I hate this, saying this name. The Quarazmian cav, 287 kills on it. 138 on the electric guard. The Welsh general does make it out. You know, the the allied general in the vicinity, or cavalry, excuse me, the attacking cavalry in the vicinity just kind of overpowered the couple units of French cab that were there. But you can see, for the most part, they've pulled most of their infantry back. They've got most of their main ranged melee infantry now holding the front. Where did the, did they finish off that, um, is this the one that we saw from over here? Did they pull it all the way over there? 190 kills. I I think so, because I don't see enough dead here for that whole shock infantry unit to be dead. Could be this one. Could be this one. And 
And then what is, is that still the mortar? Like, what is that? I keep hearing like bang. Is it just the treb? Can the treb make that angle right there? Yes, it, well, maybe, no, he's shooting over here. Am I not here in like a mortar somewhere? Are these cannon elephants? No. What is happening right now? What am I missing? Cause I'm pretty sure so the mortar's out of ammo, so it's not that. By the way, mortar, 202 kills. Pretty good. Handguns 139 kills. Somebody's gonna point out what I'm missing here and I'm gonna look like a real big idiot. But I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what is shooting over here. Oh, is it this? Can that thing shoot all the way? No way. There's no way it could shoot over there, right? 88 kills. Maybe it can. It might be able to just reach over there. He's not firing, but I, I'm going to guess that's what it is. Now we got... Hey, this is another unit of those pikes. We saw the pikes earlier. We've got fire shot coming in on the trebs. I don't know if that even works. You know, in Rome 2, that would be what you would do, but I don't even know if you can do that in this. Or if you can, how much does it take, you know what I mean, to, to burn it down with fire arrows? In Rome 2, that would be the strat to get rid of, like, a catapult or, or like, a ballista or something. They do still have some heavy axe infantry here from the Mamluks. They still have... They're elephants. They still have a little bit of cavalry. We do have some cab play over, some movement, I guess I should say, over here on the left. Still have sergeants back here just guarding the back end. Which is probably, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Like they just are out of a lot of infantry. Handguns, 166 kills. You still have some Arbalisters up here as well. They've got 139 kills. And this is a healthy unit of sergeants that is wavering. That's crazy. Is the Welsh general dead? No, there's an, he's not dead. So how is a unit that large? And that's a not a bad unit either. That's a 15th century, century sergeant. So, like... That's nuts. 184 kills now on them, and that's like half in melee combat, too. See, they're like kind of fighting over here, but then the guys behind her like sh keep shooting. Handguns from the Marinids, uh, 109 kills. Look at that, 190. This is tough. This pike is going to be really hard to deal with. Your best bet is going to be kind of setting up a kill box here. You know, instead of fighting them frontally like this, you kind of have to box it off so that, you know, you can hit them from a direction their pikes aren't pointing. He actually pulls his pikes off for some reason. Not really sure why. They, I mean, they were getting, you know, they took some losses for sure. But it's not like they're getting shot you know, by anything, or, you know, everything's dead. They do still have the Treb with 70 kills, which I hate to say is it's not the greatest on Trebs. Look at this. Mamluk Cav coming all the way around. He's got 60 kills, no losses. He's coming in. He's going to get in the Light Bow Infantry. The Marinid General trying to get out of there, but the Elector Guard General is coming in. 46, 40, ooh. It's Mamluk. Mamluk General, I believe, is quite a bit better. Look at that, 121 kills all of a sudden. This this uh, Marinade General needs to help. 
because I do not believe that the Electric Guard can take on the Mamluk Cavalry by itself. 75, 71 uh, units, that's what I'm looking at. He's bringing his cab out the breach. It's probably a smart idea. Get him out of that box right there. Might get a little shot here from the uh, Catalan crossbows. Gets hit by the mortar. Mortar with 98 kills. He's going to come in and wipe up that mortar. And then the electric guard it might just kind of pace him. Now we've kind of hit a little bit of a lull in the battle. You'd say they're no longer pushing really anywhere at the moment. Looks like they may start to send in these dismounted Electric Guard. They're pretty much untouched. They've taken a couple losses, but not much. And to be honest with you, they have a pretty good chance of eating through a lot of this. You do have one of these heavy axe infantry, which is kind of like a, it's almost like a lightweight shock infantry, if that makes sense. Is that the whole unit? Yeah, like he kind of bunched up like the unit did, which sucks because it might limit a little bit of how effective that charge was. I'm trying to get some looky looks here it is cool looking you know seeing the difference here between the very western influence on the left hand side of your screen and the very eastern influence on the right hand side right hand side of your screen the tabateria might do relatively well here but the heavy shock infantry is it's pretty good and especially you got another unit coming in the dismounted hospitaler knights you know, this is, this is tough. Got another unit of Tabateria coming in, though. A little surprised we haven't seen the can the uh, elephants go in yet. Ooh, here we go. Sorry, I missed it, but the Mamluk Cavalry getting swarmed by the two generals here. How did he do... 194 kills with a, sh a silver chevron. Both the generals here are pretty banged up. I don't know if they lost either of them, though. Have we lost any generals? Yes, the Welsh general is dead. Let's see if we can find... Looks like the tr uh, electorate of Trier is still alive. And the Marinid looks to still be alive. For the... Defenders, I believe Jean d'Arc, I believe, died, right? This is the Karazmian general who seems to be alive, as well as the Mamluk general. Yep, Jean d'Arc is dead. D E D, dead. Bounce power, let's see, we've got. Wow, what do we have? 1,400 man difference between the attackers and defenders here. 2,200 to 800. That's, that's a big difference. Especially this late in the game. You know, this late in the game you start worrying about things like army losses. Tabateria charging forth into the pikes. The pikes in kind of an awkward position, so they probably got a good charge there. Tabateria with 90 kills. They're swapping out with a fresh unit. Well, I use the term fresh loosely. The Pikes here, 42 out of 120. They've only got 17 kills. Pikes in this game are not the same as Pikes in Rome 2. They are not going to perform the same way. Look at all the city that's burnt down here. These damn guns are still going. And 281 kills. And they're still rolling. 283 with two chevrons. 51 men left. Uh, 
And they're taking on, like, some of this is melee combat, guys. I wonder if he's going to move them a little farther over and shoot down at these Pavis crossbows. But those Pavis crossbows are looking at them, probably waiting for them to do that. God, the attackers have so much left. Look at all this. Including Halbadirs, just regular melee infantry. A lot of their range is out of ammo, which is super lucky for the defenders. The Tabaderia is going to get focused here by the little bit of ammunition that's left. You can see just a tiny bit of ammo. This one has pretty good, and these, this is one of the Welsh archers. Not a longbow, though. I think it's just a regular bow infantry. The handgun's actually working their way out down the other end of the wall. Sergeant's charging in. And then you're going to get kind of sergeant v. sergeant, right? You have France v. England. This is classic 100 Years War matchup here. Let's see if we can't get a good... The good looksy, good looky Lou, you know what I mean? Get some of these English uniforms and some of these French uniforms. This banner is really cramping my style right now. Classic matchup. And then all of a sudden, well, they're the Welsh, excuse me, but it's technically not the English. A little surprised we haven't seen some of this cavalry try looping around. And I continue to be surprised that we haven't seen any of the, the elephant play yet. curious to when they're going to send them in and obviously and obviously curious as to how effective they're going to be cav coming in the center charging in on the sergeants in the tabaderia it's the elector guard 186 192 and he busted through he's going after the other unit of tabaderia he might break though he's wavering 11 out of 80. Some of these units, they need to turn around and prepare for the pole arms. Once again, you're probably going to have to box this. Kind of a triangle here with those two units. They have to hold a unit here to watch. Handgun looping around the side, though. We're going to see elephants. The Mamluk general coming around, he's going out the back way, but the elephant's moving to the center. We're going to get the elephants. There's the fire ammo. Pull arms, honestly, probably would be fine. You would think. He pulls him back. He thought about taking his infantry over here, but decided not to. I think those handguns finally broke, by the way. But they were, like, upwards of... They were almost 300. I think they might have gotten a little over 300 kills. I bet you the attackers are damned glad that those things are out of their hair. Pull arms, are they gonna start going back up? I like this look, this almost more black and you know what I mean? Less blue, a little more black. It's a very, very, if anything, a very, very dark blue on these French sergeants. Right. 
And I don't think he meant to send in his crossbows to combat. Whoops. Oopsie daisies. Ooh, the sergeant's uh, break it, wavering here. And they are gone. And then the tabata or the, the tabataria looked like they were about to break too. Sergeants, he might be able to no, uh, they're I think they're gonna get out of that too soon. I think they really need to get some cab play happening over here. You know, that gen they've got might be able to get some good charges in over this area. But also, their, you know, big spot here is falling to pieces. This is the main point. And it is in big trouble. So what they may have to do, they're bringing their infantry over. Now they should probably bring their cab over here to, to try and screen this. See if they can't kind of, you know, cause the attackers to be less willing to come to this back area. The elephants are good against cavalry, so this is this is good to get into this. Elephants now 74 kills. I really wish that it gave you friendly kills. If it told you what the friendly kills were. It's got the pikes are gonna they're uh, broken, not shattered yet though. They kind of got into the halberdiers, but the halberdiers are relatively well position, uh, positioned to face them. You can see the halberdiers did take some losses. 129 kills on the elephants now. The elephants are not out of control yet. Here's the general. As well as, that's actually both generals over here. They do get into the handguns and get rid of them. They might even just consider charging right into these Pavi's crossbows. Since the Pavi's crossbows are running, they might be able to get into them before they stop to put a volley. Probably not anymore. I think the command was a little too late. Now they're going to take one to the face. Let's see if they charge them. Or they just kind of walk at them. And for some reason, the crossbows, no fire. Interesting. They had plenty of time. Could be just one of those things. It's the game. You know what I mean? Elephants, 238, 39, 43. This could be the big break. This could be the big break they needed. They took two losses. Two elephants have died now. Cavalry coming in and trying to help against these halberdiers. Elephants, they just got to keep moving. 280, two chevrons. Once again, this could be the big break the defenders needed to swing this in their direction. The Karazmian general taking a charge from the electric guard. The electric guard is far health. Well, maybe not far healthier. They're actually relatively even health. And the electric guard does not seem to be taking that charge very well. I think he's going to win, but just by the hair. We'll see. Yeah, he's, he's wavering. But the elephant's coming in. He's taking a couple more losses. Is he going to swing it? Oh, he might just do that. 29 out of 80. 26. Allies general is dead. That's probably the Quasmian general. Still have the Mamluk general. I'm pretty positive he's still alive. But he's wavering. See? The elephant is now out of control. He's also down to eight, which means only four elephants. Th those four, that's it. I think it's just not enough. Just not enough. 363 with three chevrons in the elephant. They're probably going to finish off this general before they go, but it, it does look like the attackers are going to take this one. 19 seconds left. How is this general still alive? That's what I want to know. That was a great charge by the Mamluk Gen. Turn around. Turn around. No, nope. that is it. All right, let's go ahead and look at some kills here. 
Do do. Sorry, it's just loading that final little bar before I can, you know, click things. All right. So first off, for the defenders, we have Teddy Rond as France. Unfortunately, Jean d'Arc getting uh, just kind of, you know, beat up by a lot more Cav than her. 470 on the dismounted French Chevaliers. Great. 16, not so hot. But look at this. 153 is good. 306 on the handguns. 153, 146, 230. Very, very good. Posguin as the Quarazmian Empire. Um, infantry, it's just not so hot. 363 on the elephants. 292 on the calf. 213 on the general. Kirito Black as the Mamluks. We've got 194 on the Cavs, pretty good. 162 is pretty good. Um, Archers, look at that, 204, 238. You know, pretty good stuff. The Tapateria, 174. For the attackers, we've got Alton, or his Imperial Majesty, as the Principality of Wales. Got 202 on the dismounted Hospitaller Knights. Some of his infantry did pretty good. Sergeants, 125, 142, 146, 187 on the Cav. Did better than I thought after kind of having a little bit of a rough start. Not so mexy as the Marinid Sultanate. Um, the Cav Jin, 141. Um, one of his Cav, 97, 86 on the other. Infantry did okay. 124 on the handguns. Just decent. Billy Blazes as the electorate of Trier. We've got, let's see, 122 on the dismounted Elector Knights. 113 on the Halberdiers is pretty solid. Um, 232 on the Elector Guard General. And then his Mortars, 202 kills. That is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And we will see you guys next time.